normal, those are five turns that Cali Rex Ice Rider can attack. Yeah, when I was watching that top four set with, against Alex, it really did seem like Jeremy's thought process is slow and steady wins the race. Mm -hmm. He understands that there's no there's no moral victories on how many turns it takes you to win a match as long as you get the W. So you don't have to win a turn. You don't have to win a game in three or four turns. If it takes 12, 13, 14 turns, Jeremy is definitely comfortable enough in that position and understands that, you know, if that's the zone he needs to be in to potentially come back against something who is a lot more aggressive or offensive that Stefan is holding, that is his best way of winning. Not a slow and steady start, though. That is going to be Incineroar and Reggie Alecki out on the field for Jeremy. A very calming lead against a very aggressive lead of that Zacian and the Kyogre from Stefan. Yep, turn one of Masters Finals of the Indiana Regional Championship. So Gabby looking at an electric type like Reggie Alecki facing off against Kyogre. What does Stefan do? Well, the Kyogre does have the Assault Vest, which helps it out. I think if you were to go for the Dynamax on Kyogre, that means it's guaranteed to take one attack from this Reggie Alecki. But uh, it, it's such a gamble to make. Like, you don't necessarily want to launch your Kyogre into Dynamax immediately turn one in this situation. Jeremy could decide he wants to Dynamax with his own Reggie Alecki. He could decide he wants to Bolt Switch and try and get something else in on the field. Uh, really, Kyogre is kind of the uh, bulky tank of this team, and you want it to be like a pivot that you can kind of consistently rely on, so that way you're dealing damage with Origin Pulse, you're dealing uh, damage with Max Strike if you do decide to go for a more later game Dynamax. I think that you have to keep this Kyogre safe, and it uh, looks like Stefan is choosing to Dynamax it as a way to find that safety. I think the biggest question is going to be these damage calcs and how these two Pokemon pair up, because if Jeremy is able to find a large KO here somehow, that's going to be absolutely devastating for Stefan. No switches from either of these trainers. I was maybe anticipating Zashin to switch out as Reggie Lecky is one of the only Pokemon faster than it in the format. But the rising voltage into Kyogre, while super effective, does not do too much damage. And there's no electric train or anything on the field to boost that damage output. Behemoth played from Zashin into the Reggie Lecky will bring it down to under half of its HP. And then if Kyogre does double target that slot, that will be a knockout. Reggie Lecky will be down for the count this game. Instead, Max Geyser into the Incineroar, and as we saw so many times in uh, top, in Jeremy's top eight match, the Incineroar just gets clean knocked out by Max Geyser every single time. It does, and that's a great opportunity for Stefan now to get that Zacian away to safety, get that attack boost back up later, and then not have to worry too much about it. There is no electric terrain on the field, like you mentioned, Joe, which means that Reggie Alecki, assuming Max Voltage, or Rising Voltage is its most powerful move at this point, is not going to find a knockout on Kyogre this turn. Jeremy could decide to send in a Pokemon like the Reshiram, maybe try and get some damage down on the field that way. Or Porygon 2, we know it has access to Trick Room. It gets Intrepid Sword, apparently, <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, but more importantly, I think, is the presence of Eerie Impulse on that Porygon 2. Kyogre is on the field. It's Dynamax. If Jeremy wants to, he could simply go for a Eerie Impulse into that Kyogre, drop its special attack stat by two stages, and try and buy himself time. We now know with Porygon 2 being revealed here that Jeremy did opt to leave a Restricted in the back. He only has room for the Reshiram or the Calyrex in this spot. Yeah, I think it's the Calyrex at this point. You know, as much as I was talking about Eerie Impulse this uh, when Porygon 2 was revealed, if it is the Calyrex Ice Rider in the back of Jeremy's party, I think you go for Trick Room, and then I think you go for the Eerie Impulses in subsequent turns. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy actually Dynamaxing yeah. uh, with, with, the, <laughs> with the half health Reggie Lecky. So we, we're kind of we're kind of startled at that moment because you could have been full health when you did it last turn and the electric train would be set up here. So your Max Lightnings would be doing even more damage. But Max Lightning now going to connect not with the Kyogre, but with the Zacian. And that is a guaranteed knockout. It is so, so hard for Zacian to take that. There's just no chance, especially with the Life Orb revealed on that Reggie Alecki as well. So the Electric Train will finally hit the battlefield as Stefan is going to have to uh, going to have to reply with a Max Geyser. So if that goes into the Reggie Alecki slot, it would have knocked that. But instead, that brings Porygon 2 down actually pretty low. That's pretty solid damage out of it, but then pouring on two with an eerie impulse will harshly lower the special attack on Kyogre's end. 
I mean, Kyogre should still be able to get the knockout against Regieleki, as it's not the bulkiest Pokemon in the format. A grassy glide boosted by this grassy terrain as well should be able to secure that knockout for Stefan, but that Kyogre is in such a tough position right now. Because of that eerie impulse, I, I'm not even sure, you know, Porygon 2 might be able to take a Max Geyser at this point. Um, and if it is able to take that attack, then it's able to set up Trick Room. And then again, if the Calyrex Ice Rider is the last Pokemon that Jeremy has in the back, that is a win condition for him. If it's going to be that Reshiram instead, because you have to assume it's one of these two restricted Pokemon, all you really have to do is keep targeting down that Kyogre with eerie impulses, because then the Kyogre is just not going to be able to do damage to the Reshiram. We know that that Reshiram is also holding an Assault Vest. That means it's going to be very bulky on the special side of things, like the Kyogre on Stefan's side of the field and you just get into this race where it's like well Kyogre's already taken more damage therefore Reshiram is in a better chance to succeed and what a way to get some more damage out on the field with that Max Lightning as well. So crucial that the Kyogre is holding Assault Vest as that was in you know a very strong Dynamax attack from Regilecki with the Life Orb did not KO. So Kyogre is actually able to use all three turns of its Dynamax effectively by getting another knockout onto the Regieleki. So Jeremy is down to his final Pokemon, two Pokemon before he got two, and then presumably one of the two restricted Pokemon. There's in the, the Woodhammer. Woodhammer, much stronger than Grassy Glide. And gets Dun the knockout. There it is. Porygon goes down. Now we were going to say it was three to two. It's actually three to one at this point. It's just Jeremy's restricted with no access to Dynamax. As soon as I saw that Rillaboom not attacking that turn, you know, he had Grassy Terrain up on the field. That Grassy Glide would have moved first was just an indication that Stefan optimizing for the damage. Woodhammer is a much more powerful attack and as a result was able to find the knockout against that Porygon 2, who was most likely going for the Trick Room with this reveal of the Calyrex. Now it's true that Kyogre is within one hit. Calyrex could pick that up with a Glacial Lance at this point in time and get that attack boost. Rillaboom also going to be taking a ton of damage from a possible Glacial Lance. If Stefan's last Pokemon is that Incineroar in the back though, you switch it in for the Kyogre, you get rid of those eerie impulse drops, and then you come back in and Kyogre all of a sudden, Hyper Beam can deal that damage to help you win. That's definitely the safest position for Stefan to put himself in to secure this victory. So Incineroar does switch in to intimidate Jeremy's Calyrex here, so he's lost a bit of his attack stat. And a protect from the Rillaboom here, not wanting maybe a critical hit or something like that to affect his game plan. So no damage into the Rillaboom, and now the resisted Glacial Lance going towards the Incineroar. So now Stefan has access next turn to, you know, fake out, to potentially bringing the Kyogre back in. It seems like there's a lot of things that Stefan can do to win this game. Fake out plus Woodhammer this turn, it's strong damage. Woodhammer could miss, and you are going to take some recoil damage, but it's your best option to bring this Calyrex down within knockout range from a, maybe a Flare Blitz from this Incineroar once the rain has stopped, or an Origin Pulse from that Kyogre. It is unfortunate that Stefan is sort of playing closer and closer to this Origin Pulse win condition, but knowing that he has Thunder, that's another option. Electric Terrain's up, Rain's up, that's a really safe play. Hyper Beam as well. Those are the two moves he needs to look for, and he needs as much damage down as possible on this Calyrex in order to do so. Protect did stall out the fake out Woodhammer on that turn. Also, Rain has disappeared from the field, so once Kyogre switches back in, that will reset the Rain up to help those water attacks from Kyogre to do even more damage to just the single target Calyrex. You can't parting shot here, though, because if you parting shot on Incineroar, the Calyrex is going to attack after that, and then it's going to be able to knock out that Kyogre. So, unfortunately, Stefan is waiting for that Calyrex to get a knockout, and that is a little bit tough, but a prediction. Going for the U-turn from the Rillaboom, going to activate the weakness policy on that Calyrex. This is quite the play from Stefan. And this could backfire horrendously if he's not confident about how much Flare Blitz is going to do in this situation. Stefan must be very secure in his calculations, you know, knowing inside and out this team and knowing what attacks the Kyogre and the Incineroar can take. Burning Jealousy because of weakness policy buffed his attack stat. And with Burning Jealousy, when you have a stat raise on that turn, you are guaranteed to get burned. So this high horsepower is going to do nothing. It does nothing. You're absolutely correct. And that is something that Stefan 
tacked onto this team after his performance in Liverpool. And that is exactly why you run Burning Jealousy. It gives you these outs against these Pokemon that use weakness policy or use Dynamax to boost their stats. You don't have to worry about the accuracy of your moves anymore. You know that that Calyrex is going to struggle to find the damage against your team. And I think most importantly, as we go into game two, Jeremy has to respect the fact that at any point in time, at any point in time, there's a stat raise on the field. This Incineroar can immediately punish it with that Burning Jealousy. I've heard of self-activating your own weakness policy. Now we have self-activating your own Burning Jealousy here by, <laughs> by using the U-turn onto the Calyrex. So that was an ingenious play from Stefan, and you can just see the confidence he's playing with, not throughout just the whole weekend, but specifically in top eight. He is now 5-0 and oh at the moment here on Championship Sunday. Can he get that clean 6-0? Well, if there's somebody who's going to be able to take a game off him, it's going to be Jeremy, given the time to adjust and go into this game, too. If you think about his game plan, I think that he had the right idea. He just failed to find that trick room because of the wood hammer from the Rillaboom. Going into game two, you have fake out options on your team. You have Porygon 2, which is one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the format right now, especially with that Eviolite item. Maybe you just go fake out trick room. Maybe you just try and find that Calyrex the opportunity to be faster so you don't have to worry about the Burning Jealousy activating. If, if Calyrex moves first uh, and, you know, you protect or whatever the turn that your weakness policy had activated, then you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity here for Jeremy to just change up his game plan. I like the Regieleki. I like how he tried to approach that and try and sort of power through the Kyogre. It's just that Regieleki could not find the damage, and that has to be what he recognizes going into this game, too. Can Jeremy afford to leave Reshiram in the back here? We saw he just didn't have a lot of offensive pressure in game one, especially once the Regieleki went down and he lost his Dynamax. Reshiram can't get burned from Burning Jealousy, right? He's a fire type, so maybe that's the adjustment that Jeremy can make? I mean, Reshiram is also a special attacker, so even if you were to somehow magically get burned, it doesn't really matter as much, right? I think the more detrimental thing about that burn on that Calyrex was the fact that it halves all your damage from that point forwards. I think Reshiram is an interesting adjustment to make. You have the bulk from the Assault Vest to help you sort of match the bulk that Stefan's Kyogre brings. You've already sort of tried yourself in game one. Can I just power through the Assault Vest Kyogre? The answer is no, you can't. This Kyogre is just such a huge whale of a Pokemon. It has so much health, so much defense, thanks to that Assault Vest. You have to try and match that yourself. And I really like how we're already getting started with that Reshiram adjustment from Jeremy as we get off to game two. Double fire types against the Kyogre Zashin lead for Stefan, so that's what he had, you know, before. And as we saw, the Kyogre was integral to his success in game one. Will it be the same case in game two? The nice thing about leading the Zashin here is that even after the Intimidate, Zashin's play rough is going to be dealing a nice chunk of damage to that Reshi Ram. I think you also give yourself the opportunity to sort of pivot the Zashin out, uh, you know, say, hey, maybe this isn't my moment. I wasn't expecting this Reshi Ram adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and switch in my own Incineroar, perhaps, and then use Kyogre to go on the offense. I mean, the nice thing about Kyogre is that it's pretty comfortable on the field right now. Whatever water move it takes is going to be dealing a ton of damage. And even if the Incineroar on Jeremy's side of the field flinches it with a fake out this turn, you could Dynamax or you could just, you know, just wait a turn. I mean, it's, there's only so much Reshi Ram can do at this point. Stefan switching his own Incineroar onto the field. Jeremy doesn't switch anything out here, and it will be Jeremy deciding to Dynamax the Reshiram here in game two. We saw so many times, as, as all day, Jeremy has went to game three. So if he lost game one, the adjustment a lot of times was lead Reshiram and Dynamax it and, you know, try to get rid of the rain, maybe a Max Flare, try to get some special defense. No fake out. Quake. No oh. fake out. Incineroar gets knocked out oh. yet again. On Jeremy's end, this Incineroar has done nothing but it, get KO'd in every match it's been in on stream this oh, weekend. No. The Max Flare goes into a fire type as well in the rain. That's just a double whammy for Reshiram there. It will get the sun at least, but at what cost? 
at what cost for Jeremy? Losing Incineroar early on in both of these games really hurts his ability to pivot, and as a result, almost forced to bring out this Calyrex Ice Rider now. Yes, it won't have to worry about being intimidated as the Incineroar is already out on the field, but Incineroar has access to Fake Out, can flinch at this turn. Kyogre could go for its own Dynamax at this point and switch that weather back. Uh, Stefan just in such a comfortable position after that turn. It was such a brave play to forego the fake out from Jeremy. I think that he was hoping that uh, Stefan would maybe adjust or play a little bit more passively with that Kyogre, but he didn't need to. He could have just clicked that water spout and regardless of what happened that turn, Kyogre would have been fine. And that's what's terrifying about Assault Vest Kyogre. Yeah, it really has proven incredibly effective for Stefan all weekend in all the different matchups it either tanked a hit that it would not have been able to before or it's given him the access to max strike because he doesn't need to hold protect so it's just an incredibly well constructed team that Stefan has brought here to Indianapolis he is going to decide finally uh, to match with a Dynamax Incineroar in this matchup uh, maybe going to give yourself a little bit more HP against the potential Max Quake coming your way so that could help out there I don't know you can also take advantage of the Sun being up right now and Cower X with Protect Exactly. You take advantage of the sun and go for a Max Flare. Uh, Kyogre, this is a really fun calculation for you. Uh, Water Spout, even with the sun up, can still deal the most damage from all of Kyogre's options. And uh, that's exactly what we saw here. Was it a lot of damage? No. But it, it counts for something. It counts for something. And again, Kyogre just still on the field here to just be a threat. Well, the Incineroar doesn't take that hit if he didn't Dynamax, so I, that was a, a pretty smart play there as the Max Quake does not claim a knockout. It will give two special defense buffs or one each to both of Jeremy's Pokemon. And then there is the Max Flare into the protected Calyrex, so that only did a quarter of the damage. It will, however, give Jeremy his weakness policy buffs this time around with no chance at Burning Jealousy to stop it. Yeah, it's uh, important things to note about how the Pokemon are speed-wise on the field at this point in time. Uh, Reshiram will be moving consistently before that Incineroar, so can knock it out before a Max Flare would really threaten the Calyrex on Jeremy's side of the field. But another interesting interaction, unnerved from that Calyrex meant that the Incineroar could not consume the Shuka Berry and uh, weaken that Ground-type attack. So a very good use of the dual abilities on Calyrex for Jeremy. A lot of times we only see the Chilling Nay or the Grim Nay come through, but the Unnerve is such a key component to this. Uh, Incineroar, I think, is a really fun Dynamax option for Stefan. Uh, to be honest, though, I don't think he necessarily needs it to win the game at this point. I think that if he can get one more turn of damage, that's great. But honestly, a safe switch in for his Zacian, it would be even better. And that Water Spout doesn't do a lot. This Max Quake will, however, knock out Incineroar. So Stefan only got one turn of Dynamax in this matchup and it went into a protected Pokemon so really not the most effective use of it but as you were saying Stefan definitely doesn't need to win this game through the Dynamax you have the Zacian in the back who can super effectively hit the Calyrex you have a potential fourth Pokemon as well that can help you but Calyrex goes for Trick Room here twisting the dimensions so now slower Pokemon like the Calyrex itself will be moving first and the Reshiram will be moving first as well. And that was a great adaptation for Jeremy. I think the issue with Stefan's team, as bulky as it is, you just don't have many answers once Trick Room has been set up on the field. If you have the ability to stall through the, room, the five turns of Trick Room, then you're usually okay. Uh, but what we're seeing here, especially with the Rillaboom being forced out onto the field, is that this Zacian does it. You know, think back to Paul Ruiz when he was playing earlier with Kyogre and Zacian. That Zacian had access to Substitute and found its way through Trick Room by alternating Substitute and Protect. This Zacian does not have access to that. And as a result, he has to be very, very careful about when that Zacian makes an appearance on the field. You know, you ideally want it to make an appearance on the last turn of Trick Room or you try and switch it in on an opportunity where you don't think it's going to take that much damage. The big question for me is, did Jeremy call this? The Zacian does switch this to that Kyogre slot. Kyogre wanting to switch out so it can eventually reset the rain up at some point to lower the fire damage coming out from Restoran. Boom does protect, so the Glacial Lance won't connect onto it. It is a resistant attack into the Zacian as well, so it hopefully should not be too much damage that the Zacian can't endure. It does have the weakness policy boost, though, uh, so that does actually even it out to do over 50%. And then the Blue Flare goes into the Protect, so he does not get the knockout on Zacian. 
And that's an important thing for Stefan. Now that the Zacian is on the field, you can protect this turn. That is another turn of Trick Room that goes away. You can also use the Rillaboom to deal a little bit of chip damage with that Grassy Glide, probably to the Calyrex, as that seems like the scariest Pokemon right now. As soon as Kyogre is back out on the field with the rain, with the Origin Pulse or the Water Spout, really, that's going to be enough damage to sort of help take out this Reshiram eventually. You know, I don't think the Reshiram can out damage the Kyogre as long as Kyogre is still close to full health. But this Calyrex, this Calyrex is going to be really difficult to find a way to knock out. Rillaboom goes for the Grassy Glide, Glacial Lance knocks it out. That's another attack boost for Calyrex. And then all of a sudden this Kyogre, just what can it do? The other thing I'm thinking of with Zashin, if it wanted to protect here, you'd get the grassy terrain recovery to go back over 50% to try to make it so that the Glacial Lance does not knock it out. But we're not even going to have that option here because he switched it out into Kyogre to get the rain back. So now if there are the blue flares from Reshiram, who will be doing less damage. Calyrex does hang on through the Grassy Glide, and here is a Glacial Lance hitting onto both of Stefan's Pokemon. Rillaboom definitely doesn't want to take this hit, and it is enough for oh, a knockout, man. and Kyogre hangs on with 14 oh, HP. Man. That was a critical hit for him there. So now Trick Room is still up. Kyogre can, can't take any more hits, and Calyrex get another attack boost. Kyogre cannot protect either, and uh, it doesn't really doesn't matter as to. this Earth Power will be enough to knock it out at this point in time. Zacian, the last Pokemon remaining for Stefan. Now, mind you, a Protect or two here would certainly stall out the remainder of Trick Room, but at that point in time, you have the Reshiram, you have the Calyrex, and then you have a, th a final Pokemon in the back for Jeremy that we haven't seen revealed yet. I think that the Reshiram was the perfect adjustment for Jeremy. Getting that Trick Room up just hurt Stefan so much. That that is the Achilles heel of this team. You cannot really play against Trick Room. Your best bet is to stall it out. And when you have two heavy hitters like the Reshiram and Calyrex side by side, especially after the weakness policy boost on that Calyrex, it's just going to be very difficult to find the opportunity to win that game. Zashian protecting on this turn, so it doesn't take any damage from either the Glacial Lands or the, the Earth Power coming in its direction. Reshiram deciding to Earth Power instead of Blue Flare, you know, with the rain being up and everything like that. And plus, double target anyway is going to knock it out because of how low of HP the Zashian is at. But this is what we were talking about the previous turn when it switched out. You're back over 50% HP. That Glacial Lance did, like, maybe 55, 60 to you last time. Can you endure it? He gets the double protect. I mean, even if you do get the double protect, though, you're now doing single target damage from that Glacial Lance, which should make up for the fact that, uh, you know, you are getting these turns of recovery in between things. But I think what we're seeing here is Stefan taking a page from Jeremy's book in game one of his top four match. You play the game out. You don't necessarily win in this condition. You would need some crazy, crazy luck in order to pull off the win at this point in time. But this is time. You can think, you can plan things out. It's possible that Stefan wasn't expecting this adjustment from the Reshiram. Oh, Reshiram avoids the play rough oh. anyway, so we're not even going to know the potential outcome there as Earth That's Power information, brings though. it down low. That's good to know that Earth Power only did about half, maybe 45 to 50% damage to the uh, Zashi in there, so that's still nice for him to know, but this double target will take it down, and we are going to game three here in the finals. One match away from desire, deciding a victor. Another interesting thing to note about that last turn is, you know, we've seen Jeremy play to his win conditions very, very well throughout this entire tournament. That last turn, he went for Glacial Lance. He was either, you know, guaranteed to get the knockout at that point in time, or possibly didn't want to set up Trick Room. Maybe it was the Regieleki in the back. You know, we did not see that last Pokemon on his side of the field. A late game Regieleki against a Kyogre that's already taken a bunch of damage, regardless of how bulky that Kyogre is, would be a very strong way to knock it out. So these are all the things that Stefan has to keep in mind as he's sort of going through his game plan. You know, he has to worry about Trick Room. He has to worry about, you know, a late game Trick Room. You know, a Trick Room that just sort of happens whenever uh, Jeremy finds that opportunity to get that Calyrex out on the field. Certainly going for Burning Jealousy would have helped. You know, getting burns on down onto the Calyrex Ice would mean that that Glacial Lance, regardless of how many attack boosts it gets, is not going to be doing as much damage and is way more reasonable. 
but then you can't really Dynamax the Incineroar, and then you have to worry about taking the Earth Power and the High Horse Power. So it's all going to be about positioning in that's this what game I wanted, three. That's what I wanted to circle back to was the Dynamax Incineroar, because as we've seen so much from Stefan's run here to the finals, who are the best Dynamaxers? Kyogre, very strong in game one. Zapdos in previous sets was a very effective Dynamaxer. We even saw G-Max Rillaboom be very strong for him. So to kind of pivot from the conventional strategy of those three, your core Dynamax users, into the Incineroar, I guess because the because the, the sun was up, so you were doing more damage. I, I wonder if you'd be better served if just kept the Kyogre as his Dynamax attacker. I think so. I, I think so. And that that's not just because it worked out for him in game one. I just think that Incineroar has so much more utility on this team if it doesn't Dynamax. Like, yes, you can Dynamax in a situation where you know 100% that's your win con. You know, I've seen him in other games uh, go for the Dynamax on Incineroar and then use Max Strike as a form of speed control. So Kyogre then outspeeds with Water Spout and then wins the game. But like, that's a very specific situation that he did not find himself in in that previous game. And while yes, you do need that Dynamax in order to take the attack so that Incineroar can at least stay on the field, you might have been better served just going for the Dynamax on Kyogre and being able to do that massive amount of damage that Kyogre can do with Max Geyser into both the Reshiram and the Calyrex Ice Rider. Um, going into this game three, you know, I think Dynamax is key here. And uh, Jeremy already making yet another adjustment into the, his game plan. No restrictions in his lead for Jeremy with the Porygon 2 Incineroar start. Again, Zashian Kyogre is the lead of choice for Stefan. Seems like that is definitely the lead pair that he is the most comfortable with in this matchup. Looking at this lead from Jeremy, the thing that jumps out to me immediately, immediately is Trikram. You go for Sacred Sword into that Porygon 2, you go for Max Geyser in, from that Kyogre into the Porygon 2. And yes, that's a knockout, but Incineroar can flinch the Zacian, and uh, then all of a sudden you're looking at two Pokemon who have Trick Room up. Mind you, it's earlier on in the game, so there's more you, there's more tools available to Stefan to stall through those turns, but uh, he has to be thinking about Trick Room, as that was really the thing that put him and forced him even on the back foot in game two. No Dynamax from either side. This flinch will stop the Zacian from attacking. Water Spout at full HP into Incineroar. We see this every game. It's like it's on repeat. Incineroar just gets knocked out cleanly on turn one. Every time, Porygon down to half of his HP, but it will be able to set up the Trick Room, and that gives Jeremy a free switch in to one of his Trick Room sweepers. And it's going to be the Calyrex Ice Rider. I, I feel like it has to be. Like, this is the situation that you want it on the field in. You know, you can go for that Dynamax. You can go for Max Quake to threaten the Zacian. Uh, you could even just go for a High Horsepower or another Glacial Lance and a foul play from that Porygon 2 if you wanted to. Um, there's so many options for Jeremy now that the dimensions have been twisted and Stefan is immediately forced to slow things down. To Stefan's benefit, the fact that Kyogre is out on the field, is at full health, and isn't staring down something that can knock it out in one or two hits means that he will have the opportunity to fire off Water Spout or Origin Pulse and sort of build up some chip damage. I think Jeremy could try and mitigate that with some eerie impulses, but you have to worry about the Zacian because if you ignore the Zacian for too long, and I think that we've established that the Zacian is bulky enough to take one attack from this Calyrex, regardless if it Dynamaxes or not. Uh, then uh, Zacian fires off a Behemoth Blade that knocks out the Calyrex, and then Jeremy's down to his last two Pokemon in this game three. So it's a very tough prediction to make here. Do you double into the Zacian? Do you go for the attack into the Kyogre? Uh, Stefan, though, going for Dynamax of his own this first. Could, this could lead you right into the trap of the Eerie Impulse because Trick Room is up. So Porygon 2 is faster than Kyogre it right now. It is, but that also means that this, the Calyrex is not Dynamaxing this turn. So only the, actually, Calyrex is going to protect on this turn. Jeremy wants to stagger that Dynamax. It's something Aaron has talked about a lot this weekend, is if you wait until your opponent is done with their Dynamax, you are in such an effective position against them. Eerie Impulse lowering the special attack of Kyogre by two stages. Minus two is oh. not enough to knock out the Porygon. It hangs on for oh. 13 HP, and Behemoth Blade goes into the Protect. That Eerie Impulse was huge. It was absolutely huge, and Jeremy is 
more than capable of going for a second one, but I think at this point, if Porygon 2 is central to your game plan, you probably want to look to a recover or something in order to keep it on the field a little bit longer. That protect on Calyrex was great, though, because it does allow for the staggering of the Dynamax, and as a result, forces the Zacian off the field. Again, this Rillaboom swapping in to take an attack for it, but that's only going to boost up Calyrex's attack further. Yeah, it's just like the Beast Boost back in the day where you want to switch something in, but all you're really doing is you're trying to save Zacian a little bit. All you're doing is making it an even more difficult position down the road because the Calyrex will be having even more attack when that happens. Now it is time for Jeremy to Dynamax with his Calyrex Ice Rider here. Porygon 2 will still be very fast because Trick Room is up, so you can go for a recover. And then you know at that point the Max Geyser is not going to knock out. But instead of recovering, there's he goes the weakness for policy. The self activating weak, weak, weakness policy. Calyrex Ice Rider, plus two attack now, will be incredibly strong into whatever target it wants to go for. It's the Max Quake targeting down one of Stefan's Pokemon, and that is the Rillaboom that just switched in. Not a knockout, but he does get a special defense boost. He gets a special defense boost, and he has those attack boosts waiting for when the Zacian returns. So, you know, yes, Rillaboom will have the opportunity to go for a single Grassy Glide, but, you know, more importantly, I think this Porygon 2 leaving itself open for the knockout from this Max Geyser. And now, if Stefan chooses, you can switch out the Kyogre. Oh, now you crit the 11 health Porygon. Hey, Not when you go. got Eerie Impulse. Hey, hey, that Kyogre is doing doing his best you know yes maybe he's a turn late on that one but still gets that knockout and does open up the opportunity for stefan to switch out that kyogre switch into his last pokemon and then once trick room is over once kyogre is in a bit of a safer position it has its full health it has its special attack back to normal and can use water spout to deal so much damage there is nothing that jeremy has at this point that can outspeed this kyogre once trick room has ended and there's only two turns left there, there are the two turns of Trick Room. One thing that the benefit of Assault Vest all weekend is now a detriment to Kyogre because he cannot protect to stall out Trick Room to keep his health at full HP. You're gonna probably lose some HP at some point and then those, or, or excuse me, those, uh, those attacks are not going to be at full effectiveness because you won't be at full HP. So the interesting thing about Water Spout and Origin Pulse is that the 80% mark is approximately where it's better to use Origin Pulse than Water Spout, assuming Rain is up on the field. Stefan has a lot of comfort when it comes to that number. And, you know, just switching your Kyogre into the back. If you have Incineroar as your last Pokemon, this would be a fantastic job to, time to reveal it, as that Intimidate will help a little bit. But more importantly, there is only one turn of Trick Room left after this. And even if there is a double knockout Zacian protects, Dynamax is over, and that's your way through. You also have access to Fake Out next turn, too, if you are, you if do. the Incinero does stay on the field. So, you do. Real Boom protecting on this turn. Max Quake from the Calyrex Ice Rider into the Real Boom oh, again. Oh, protect protecting that, a Zacian switch in! That would have been crazy if the Quake went into Incinero, but instead it goes into the protected Rillaboom. So you do get another special defense boost, which will help when Kyogre eventually gets back onto the field but it's not great because Blue Flare also went into the Rillaboom's Protect. It did, and that Rillaboom protecting just in time. Incineroar can go for Fake Out into the Reshiram this turn. Uh, Rillaboom could opt to go for a Grassy Glide, get a little bit of damage down. I don't think you necessarily switch it out at this point in time. There's too much to lose. Yes, you do give that Calyrex Ice Rider a attack boost, but on the other hand, your Zacian gets in for free, Trick Room is over, and Behemoth Blade is enough to secure that knockout. I think that uh, Stefan is in a really fantastic position here. You almost want the Kyogre and the Zacian to come out on the field at the same time so that Kyogre can sort of handle the Reshiram and then that Zacian can handle the Calyrex Ice Rider. Uh, but you know, we, there's still one more turn of Trick Room. There's still one more turn of Rain. And uh, as a result, Jeremy will have the opportunity to at least deal some damage this turn. Max Quake for the third turn in a row from the Calyrex going into Incineroar. Finding no access mark. to the Shukaberry, as nope. you mentioned in the previous game, because of that double ability that Calyrex Ice Rider has with the Unnerve. And we'll also get another attack buff there. So Jeremy really going all in on his, on his special defense here. Three max quakes in a row means that this Kyogre really can't do too much to it. You are going to U-turn, though, so you'll be able to get either Kyogre or Zacian in, and then the other slot gets in for free. So you send in Zacian here because Rain is still up on the field. If you wait to switch in the Kyogre, Rain stops, Rain gets reset. 
So you have to make that ordering here. Otherwise, Kyogre's on the field and there's no rain against a, uh, a Reshiram that has blue flare. And that's just something that you really need to have uh, support wise at this moment in time. But still a great call from Jeremy there, prioritizing the damage onto that Incineroar. Rillaboom at this point in time, yes, it does provide fake out pressure. Yes, it can uh, get those priority attacks in and keeping grassy terrain up means that there's more health for everybody. Everybody gets some of that action in, uh, but it's not exactly a damage dealer. Doesn't have to worry too much about those grassy glides getting knockouts because uh, at the end of the day, all of Stefan's Pokemon are faster at this point in time. If Jeremy can find the opportunity to get a Trick Room in, then obviously that changes things by quite a bit. But this Calyrex has already taken a lot of damage. Rain is up on the field to protect that Zacian from getting knocked out this turn. It can protect, which we do see it do. Big question though, is will two Earth Powers be enough to knock out the Zacian? So the Behemoth Blade got baited into the Protect there, so no damage. This Water Spout will only be targeting the Reshiram. It's a spread attack. Reshiram has gotten Max Quake buffs to his special defense. And the and Assault Vest. And it has vest. an Assault Vest, so that didn't even bring it down to the oh, yellow. No! And Zacian avoids the attack there, so it's actually staying pretty healthy. Opting for Blue Flare instead of the Earth Power means that you do have to worry about the accuracy and unfortunately for Jeremy tries to find that double protect does not get it which means Behemoth Blade will secure the knockout on that Calyrex Ice Rider Reshi Ram the last Pokemon standing for Jeremy now mind you it's a very bulky Pokemon and if it can find an attack onto the Zacian this turn then that will open up something but for now we're just gonna slowly whittle away at its health and uh it's really the battle of the assault vest restricted and Pokemon and another again. miss! Two turns in a row yeah. where oh. Blue Flare has missed from the Reshiram. The rain is up anyway, so it is doing less damage, but that still is a really, you know, painful position to see two such, misses in a row. It's such a tough break because you have to go for the Blue Flare over that Earth Power because you need that little bit of extra damage. Sacred Sword, consistent, accurate, will bring that Reshiram into knockout range and just like that Stefan Mott is your 2022 Indianapolis regional yeah, champion. We will see you in London Stefan. Congratulations. <laughs> you needed exactly the amount of points that winning a